Maria. Uh, and thank you very much for the organizers for inviting me to participate in this seminar. Uh, and today the topic of my presentation will be the dark side of patents, effective strategic patenting on firms and their peers. And so it, for the purpose of this paper will be to provide a more novel definition of strategic patenting and then identify which firms tend to engage in this type of patenting activity and also understand how they shape, um, how these firms shape the industry environment. So um, first question, will, so motivation, why do firms patent? So patents obviously plays a very, play a very important role in firms' value creation process. And owing a US patent gives a firm an exclusive right to making and selling its innovation within a specific market. And at the same time, patent ownership can be used by the firm to enter new markets, uh, which will help them to extract extra revenues and has a positive, have a positive effect uh, on the firm's balance sheet, increasing the profit margins, and uh, as well as leading to the overall increase in the firm's equity price and valuation. So the two sources of income which can be derived from patent ownership are the direct source of income, which comes from patent licensing, ownership transfer, as well as um, engaging in litigation process, with the purpose of obtaining the damages for patent infringement. But in addition to this direct profit that a firm can accrue from patent ownership, firms can also derive an indirect benefit uh, from the defensive nature of the patents. That is, in this context, patents can be used to deter competitors from operating and entering uh, into the same product market as the patenting firm itself. So the mere uh, threat of the patent infringement can lead to the delay of competitors entry into the new market as well as leading having a negative effect on competitors' growth and overall competitive position uh, within the market. So while most patents, like most valuable patents, which I'll be later calling technological patents, uh, usually generate both direct, which is revenue increasing uh, value to the firm, as well as indirect benefits as an entrance deterring value or strategic value, in recent uh, years it has been shown that there has been a resurgence of the patents which predominantly generate uh, uh, only a strategic value to the firms. So, and the purpose of such strategic patents, which I'll be calling later, uh, is basically to prevent subsequent entry into the given product market and protect the profits generated by the firm's related technological patents. So here, um, I'm just illustrating in this uh, table, in this graph, the evolution of strategic patenting over time. Um, and so I will discuss the, my definition of how I define patents as strategic and technological a little bit later in the presentation. But for now, I'm just showing that there has been an increase in the share of granted strategic patents uh, across all technological categories um, following 2004 and with the peak in 2008. <clears throat> so um, previous literature has focused heavily on the positive aspects of uh, patents as an embodiment of innovative activity to the firm, which leads to the sales growth, job creation, total factor productivity increase, and in general, generating positive spillovers. But um, this bright side of the patents is just one side of the coin. And as I have shown uh, before, there is an evidence that the firms can benefit uh, from the harm these patents are, ge getting, are generating to, the to its competitors. So the phenomena of so-called strategic patenting uh, is largely theoretical at this point and its existence has yet to be shown uh, empirically in a general market setting. So this will be the uh, main focus of uh, this presentation. So in this paper, I will answer such questions as, how do strategic patents affect industry environment? Uh, what is the effect of such patenting and market concentration? Uh, is it more beneficial for, uh, pat for firms to issue strategic patents as opposed to truly technological patents? And what is the impact of strategic patenting issue on the firm's competitors? So <clears throat> before I give you more details on the definition of strategic patenting, here is just the preview. So strategic patents, uh, are those which will exhibit a negative relationship between the forward citations and the economic value of those patents, uh, as opposed to a true positive relationship which was conventionally attributed to productive or technological patents. So I'll be classifying or defining strategic patents as those that fall into the <clears throat> top 50th percentile of the distribution of the economic value of the patent, which is defined following Koga 2017, but bottom 50th percentile of the distribution of the patent's technological value. Uh, which will be defined by forward citations. So the core findings of this paper are the will be the following. Um, so first of all, strategic patents, which, lead to, which are aimed at defending the market's position of the firm, will lead to an increase in market concentration following strategic patent issuance. Uh, secondly, compared to technological patents, strategic patents 
will contribute less to the increase in the firm's total effective productivity uh, as the uh, technological advancement is not the main goal of strategic patenting as opposed to technological patenting. And then strategic patents will have a negative effect on performance and productivity um, of the peer firms. And finally, <clears throat> um, as well as it will lead to the drop in the peers innovative activity and shift of innovative search strategy from exploration to exploitation. Um, and fourth, um, strategic patenting will fall, that the strategic patents that follows uh, technological breakthrough patents, which were generated previously uh, by the firm, uh, lead to greater profits than similar technological patents which are not protected by strategic patenting. Um, so this paper, uh, this findings contribute to the following strands of literature. So first and foremost, uh, this paper extends the analysis on the effect of patenting on the firm performance, um, shifting the focus from the focal patenting firm itself to the effect on its peers across different industries. So the existing literature on the impact of innovation defined by patenting activity, which focus predominantly on the effect of firm's own performance are such papers as Pakes, Hall, um, uh, Feuermensa, and uh, Hedge, and uh, others. So of the some, there are some papers previously that exist that focus on the effect of patenting on rival or peer firms. So out of those, it's worth mentioning uh, such papers by Austin, Megan and Clock, and Joppa and Cockburn. So uh, what this paper shows is that they mostly examine the R&D spillovers and only on the subsample of industries. And these studies conclude that firms may benefit from the profits from the patents of rival firms. Uh, although uh, there's evidence that patents can impose costs on these firms, which is basically the main focus of this particular uh, presentation. And secondly, uh, this is the first paper to empirically demonstrate the impact of strategic patenting uh, on patenting for market structure, performance of the patentee, and the performance and, uh, of its closest product market peers compared and compare the effect uh, of strategic patents uh, to the technological patents. So, <clears throat> Uh, previous literature on the strategic use of patent examines either theoretical implications of strategic patenting or on the empirical side its effect on the subsequent patenting activity of the, by the firms and often within a specific uh, technology class or industry. So in contrast, this paper will introduce a novel definition of strategic patenting that will allow uh, for the examination of its effect across uh, public firms in all industries. Uh, yeah, and so before I move to the main body of the presentation, let me give you a two, let me give you two examples of real world patents um, and discuss why, uh, how, why these patents can be considered strategic patents. So first example is a continuation patent, which is uh, called a slide to unlock patent by Apple, which was granted to it in 2012. So the initial patent specified it's the third patent in the series of the slide to unlock patents. And the first patent in that series specified a predefined movement on the screen to unlock the device, which was an easy obstacle to overcome by the competitors. Um, thus, this, this third patent, which was granted in 2012, uh, broadly covered continuous movement um, on, a, on, a, on a screen region to unlock the device. So, uh, Hence, this patent can be classified as strategic patent for the two reasons. The first reason that this patent was effective in preventing other firms from using this design uh, uh, without licensing it from Apple, hence making the Apple product a more superior product in the eyes of the customers. Uh, and secondly, <clears throat> uh, this patent did not actually contribute to further technological advancement since it was not a breakthrough innovation. So the uh, novelty part of this patent was already covered in the original patents in the same series. Uh, thus, uh, thus, which is reflected in the low number of forward citations which the third patent received itself. So uh, strategic patents do not necessarily need to be continuation patents, but as I will show you later, uh, they tend to more frequently fall into that category. So an example of a standalone patent, of which can be considered a strategic patent, is a Amazon one-click patent from 1999. So as the name of this patent suggests, a patent involves a method that restores customers' payment and shipment, shipping address information, allowing the customers to execute purchase with just one click. So this patent was extremely successful in preventing competitors such as Barnes & Nobles or Apple on uh, using, the same, uh, and offer, using and offering the same feature. But at the same time, uh, so yeah, at the same time, this made this patent one of the most valuable patents to Amazon 
uh, that Amazon ever issued. But at the same time, the technological contribution of this patent has been a topic of a um, heated debate whether such broad and trivial software concept as just one click uh, should be even eligible uh, for a, a patent grant. So both these examples share distinct share two uh, two things which will be a distinct characteristic of strategic patents, namely that they, the, they have a high value to the firm itself despite their low technological contribution. So this observation will be the base of the definition of strategic patents um, in, and in contrasting them to technological patents. <clears throat> so the rest of the talk, I will focus predominantly on uh, data and empirical setting and my research design, and then I will move to the main results on the effect of strategic patenting on firm's uh, performance and productivity uh, and market concentration characteristics. Uh, and then if time permits, um, I will cover some robustness checks. So let me start with the data. So to estimate the effect of strategic patents, that strategic patents have on firms and industries, uh, the data set which I'm constructing combines information on individual patent applications, firm stock market returns, uh, and the balance sheet information. So the data on patent applications comes from USPTO uh, census of published uh, patents, which covers the sample uh, from November 2000 to December 2013 uh, to be able uh, this, this period is chosen to be able to have a control group of patent applications which uh, were filed but, but were rejected. <clears throat> uh, so I'm combining this data with the USPTO patent application information retrieval data set uh, to get patent examiner information. And then I'm also using uh, the broad logical categories defined in Hall uh, 2001, which are chemical, computers and communications, drugs and medical, electrical, electronic and mechanical. <clears throat> And then um, I'm combining this data set uh, based on the probabilistic record linkage of the SINE name with the name of the firms defined from CRISP CompuStat um, to combine uh, the patent data with the daily stock return data and firm performance and profitability outcome data from CompuStat uh, data set. And finally, as the definition of industry classification, I'm using text-based industry classification by Hover and Phillips 2010. Okay, so uh, this table just describes the construction of the final sample of patent applications and linking uh, the, to the patent and linking the patent applications to the patent firm balance sheet. So I'm making the following restrictions. First, I'm only focusing on uh, public firms. Uh, that is the firms to which I was able, it was, uh, it was possible to match the applications as any name to the name from uh, CompuStat. Secondly, um, I'm looking only at uh, the, the patents which were filed by a single SINE um, in order to avoid possible complications related to joint ownership of the patent by the companies. <clears throat> and finally, um, I'm, I'm requiring that the, uh, each firm has at least five years of pre and post filing outcomes uh, for the final analysis. So the final sample here consists of 102,000 uh, application SINE pairs, which covers 1,400 companies and 57% uh, of these applications were granted. And so this figure shows a total number of patent applications grouped by technological categories. So you can see that the largest category of applications is computer and communications. And there is also, we can observe a trend and the number of applications filed uh, throughout <clears throat> uh, the sample period. So you can see that there is a steady increase in number of applications filed by computing and communications uh, from 2001 to 2005, and there is a as uh, uh, there is a followed by a dramatic drop over the following four years in absolute numbers of patent applications filed within this category. <clears throat> so now let me move to uh, the definitions of my measures of economic and technological value of the patent. So for the economic value of the patent, I follow Kogan 2017 and base this value on the stock firm's market response to patent application announcement. So the economic value of the patent is thus constructed as a product of the market capitalization at the day before the patent filing and an estimated stock return related to the patent application filing. And so this variable is also normalized by the, <clears throat> this product is normalized by the number of patents which the firm files during the same year and uh, by the uh, probability that the patent is successful, which the authors take from Carly 2014. <clears throat> and, uh, as for the technological value of the patent or scientific value, or in other words, 
um, estimate knowledge contribution of this particular patent. I'm using the number of patent forward citations measured over the period of three years after the patent publication. <clears throat> so this is done to control, to account for the potential truncation problem of this variable closer to the end of the sample. Uh, yeah, so in here, uh, I'm regressing, by regressing the number of forward citations and patent value and patent value squared, we can observe that there is an inverted U relationship between the economic and technological value of patents, which is also found previously in uh, Abrams 2013. <clears throat> so uh, this results, I'm also controlling for filing, examiner argument, and firm fixed effects. Um, and uh, all the variables are normalized to standard unit, divi unit, uh, deviation, to unit standard deviation. <clears throat> so um, hence this table shows that there is indeed a positive relationship between the patent value and the forward citations which is um, highly significant throughout all specifications. But um, addition of the uh, inclusion of quadratic term, which is also highly significant but negative in this case, does not really uh, deteriorate the overall fit. So based on this nonlinear relationship between uh, economic value and forward citations for higher valued patents, <clears throat> the following analysis will be focusing on the difference between the effect of strategic patents uh, on the patentee and its competitors in comparison to technological patents. And as I've shown them before, so strategic patents will be defined as those patents that fall in the top 50th percentile distribution of economic value of the patent, but bottom 50th percentile distribution of its technological value, while technological patents are those that fall into top 50th percentile distribution of both economic and technological value of the patent. And so here, this, this figure shows the share of granted, granted patents and then the share of strategic and technological patents out of, this, out of the granted patents. So again, we can observe that the, um, the, sh the largest share of granted patents falls into the category of um, electric and electronics, while the lowest share of granted patents is in drugs and medical. At the same time, computers and communications and drugs and medical have the two highest shares of strategic patents out of the granted patents which were issued. So now let me move to the um, describing my research design um, and identification strategy. So for the following analysis, I will be um, I will be estimating the following uh, the following regression with the dependent variable being uh, the uh, productivity and performance of the of the patentee firm itself or the uh, peers' productivity and performance. So here the two main the two main coefficients of interest will be uh, the ones in red, so uh, gamma and delta. <clears throat> uh, so uh, gamma is the coefficient which shows, which will be showing the effect of the granting of a technological patent uh, on the firm's outcomes, while delta plus gamma is the coefficient of interest, which will be showing the effect of granting a strategic patent as opposed to technological patent on the, uh, on the firms. So potentially this uh, equation suffers from an ingenuity issue uh, in case that uh, <clears throat> both post-filing outcomes are determined simultaneously with the type of the patent that the firm files. So in this case, I'm, trying, I'm attempting to resolve this issue by employing a matching technique following um, Saracen's 2017. So the use of matching as an empirical tool helps to control for any confounding effect of pre-treatment variables in the data, and this improves the balance between the control and treatment groups by making them more similar in terms of the uh, distribution of their covariates. So I, I Im implement course and exact match for granted and non-granted patents and strategic and other patents within the match granted subsample. And I match exactly on the year of the patent application filing and technological category, and then I match coarsely on the patent's economic value and the size of the patent T. <clears throat> so here this table presents the comparison between the economic values of the patent for the control and treatment group, as well as the forward citations for the patent and the treatment group. <clears throat> so, this, this, uh, so here by construction, uh, I'm imposing that the uh, both treatment and control group, uh, both groups need to have no difference in their economic value of the patent which can be seen in the panel A. And at the same time, by construction, strategic patents needs to have uh, much lower forward citations as opposed to technological patents, which is illustrated from panel B. So here, this process is just an illustration and it's important to, uh, and I'm showing it to show that it's important to, um, to do this to, in order to avoid the, 
that the performance effect of strategic patents is purely driven uh, by high economic values of this patent as opposed to technological or nor grounded applications. <clears throat> and so finally, this is just a summary statistics, uh, which presents the first for the final sample grouped by the type of the issued patents for the matched for the matched sample. So let me um, move to my main to the main results. Uh, but before I move to the main main results, which is the effect on the uh, of uh, strategic patenting on market concentration and uh, firms' performance, uh, I, first I will discuss I will discuss a descriptive analysis of characteristic of strategic and technological patents. So here I'm following Abrams 2013, and it shows that there is a prevalence of a continu continuation applications among the those issued for purely strategic reasons. So here the dependent variable is the dummy variable, uh, whether the patent is classified in USPTO as a continuation patent, continuation part patent, divisional patent, or any of the three. <clears throat> so here, as we can observe that, uh, it suggests that strategic patents are more likely to be continuation applications as opposed to their technological counterparts, both on the full sample and, and the matched sample, uh, which can be seen in the model, in the, in the column one. And next, using the similar model as in this previous slide, I am, uh, this table reports the results of the type of innovative search strategies which is undertaken by the patenting firm itself. So model one shows that strategic patents on average have a high number of backward citations, uh, which indicates that the larger share of innovative search is done within the more well-developed and mature fields with rapid innovative growth. And then results in uh, columns two and three signal that patent, there's a tendency for patentee towards engaging in exploitation of technologies within the previously known areas of expertise reflected in the high number of self citations which this patent's received, as well as the high probability that this patent will be filed within a cl within a technological class which was previously known uh, to this firm. So the results discussed in the previous two tables um, indicate that consistent with the previous literature, uh, patents uh, which are of strategic nature indeed tend to fall more likely into the categories of uh, continuation patents as well as being uh, filed within the more developed and uh, mature areas as well as within the more known, uh, previously known technologies to the firm. So now let me move to the uh, main results which is first of all the effect of, of strategic patenting on market concentration. Um, so here I'm using the uh, the original regression re design with the dependent variable being the uh, herfindel hirschman index based on the firm's net sales and Hobrick phillips text-based industry classification. <clears throat> so herfindel hirschman index is defined, defined uh, the standard way, and the only difference from the usual herfindel uh, hirschman index is that by using the text-based industry classification, uh, each firm tend to have a very specific uh, firm-specific herfindel hirschman index uh, due to the fact that uh, their industry classification has, uh, for each firm, ha each firm has a unique set of competitors each year. But these results are consistent with using the standard SIC3 codes, uh, which uh, you can, if I have time, I will show you in robustness checks, or you can always uh, check it in the paper itself. <clears throat> so using this analysis, um, uh, this following table presents the results. So first of all, um, so in model three, which is the one which controls for both firm level controls, peer firm average controls, and here are the firm fixed effects, uh, one can observe that there is a positive effect of strategic patenting on, her, on the uh, market concentration. <clears throat> uh, so the coefficient is positive and highly significant. Uh, these results are uh, confirmed by the models four through six, which use an alternative uh, measure of market concentration namely the total number of product market peers. So the results remain qualitatively the same. Uh, there's a decrease in number of firms competitor, firm competitors following a strategic patent issuance. So in sum, these results are consistent with the stated purpose of strategic patenting, which is the protection of the market share and prevention of entry into the product market by uh, the firm peers. So next, um, next. Yeah, so next I will be focusing on the effect of strategic patenting on firms and competitors' uh, total factor uh, productivity. So um, while technological novel innovations do lead to high markups and improve 
from productivity, as I mentioned before, strategic patents do not have technological advancement as its main goal. Uh, they are mostly aimed at supporting and preserving monopolistic profit, which was, der which was derived from previously uh, issued technological patents by the firm. Thus, by themselves, these patents uh, tend, these strategic patents tend uh, usually to be of uh, low intrinsic scientific value. Um, so here, I'll be regressing the dependent variable uh, for this for the following table will follow in Rahul Rugal 2014, and uh, we'll be defining the revenue based total threat of productivity um, as the dependent variable for both the firm itself and for the competitors. <clears throat> So here, uh, again, the main variable of interest is the sum between uh, the gamma and delta, so these two coefficients. So we can see that both in model one and model two, uh, there is a positive effect of granting a technological patent um, on the total effect of productivity of the firm. But additionally, the overall effect on the granting of strategic patent, which is the sum of these two coefficients, is 75 to 79% lower than, uh, but still positive, uh, effect on total effect of productivity compared to technological patents. So thus, strategic patents have a lower contribution to post filing total effect of productivity, although it is still positive, positive. And then models three and four consider the impact of patenting on competitors' total effect of productivity. So as you can see, the, uh, the coefficients have the same sign. Uh, there is still a positive effect of technological patenting on the competitors' total effect of productivity, but the overall effect of strategic patenting, which is uh, some of these two coefficients is negative and constitutes an average 2.3 to 2.6 percent drop in the competitor's total effect of productivity following an issue of strategic patent. Um, so thus, this result suggests that there is a presence of positive spillovers from technological patents on productivity uh, of market competitors, um, but there's a negative spillover effect from strategic patenting uh, on the competing firms, which comes from uh, a potentially a lower telfair productivity effect on the patenting firm itself, which comes from the strategic patenting uh, and low technological knowledge spillover, which is also reflected in low forward citations of such patents. And finally, highly defensive nature of these patents aimed at pushing competitors out of this, out of this product market. <clears throat> right, and then uh, finally, I will be looking at the effect of strategic patenting on future performance of the firms and their competitors. So following uh, Kogan 2017, this table presents the results of the um, equation above, where the dependent variable is defined as the growth of a firm profit, sales, and cost of goods sold uh, over the horizon of one to five post-patent -fi post filing years. So the results show that there is, for technological patents, uh, there is an immediate and negative effect on patent profit growth uh, that appears to persist over the following three years after the patent filing. While the strategic patenting, on the other hand, exhibits a long run positive increase in profit growth in later years. Mm -hmm. um, hence, we can say that I can say that like uh, that a focus on novel technologies puts a short term strain on uh, profit growth, while at the same time generating positive product market spillovers. And so, this combination could potentially lead to the dilution of monopolistic profit of the patentee itself. So, these results do not come from sales growth, as there is no effect on the sales growth of strategic patenting. Uh, but interesting, strategic patent have, uh, but it, they come pre uh, predominantly from the effect on cost of goods sold growth, uh, which can be observed from panel C. And interestingly, strategic patenting has a limited effect on firm's cost of goods sold due to their lack of intrinsic scientific value. So as you can see, the sum of the two variables in panel C um, is most of the time pretty close to zero. <clears throat> and then, uh, uh, the, the next table replicates the same results using the sample of competitors. Um, so as opposed to the, uh, as opposed to the positive effect which the uh, technological patents uh, have, which uh, technological patents has on eventually on the uh, firm's profit growth, we can observe that strategic patenting for the competitors has a negative effect in the short term, which is two years followed by the negative effect of technological patents on the, on the competitor's uh, profit growth. And so in this case, this, these effects come predominantly from the decrease in the sales growth, which is consistent with the uh, purpose of uh, strategic patenting, which is a capture of the market share uh, uh, of the firm from their competitors. <clears throat> And the results of cost of goods sold are pretty similar to the results on the firm themselves, with here they might potentially be coming from 
the fact that the firm is decreasing in sales growth, thus there's a drop in its cost of goods sold growth uh, as well. <clears throat> and so these are the main results. And let me now show you uh, the effect on the st of strategic patenting. So yeah, so the results so far were strategic patenting increases market concentration, uh, only marginally improves the, uh, improves the productivity of the patenting itself while having a negative effect on total fair productivity of its competitors. And strategic patents bene are beneficial for the performance of the patentee, but detrimental for the peers' profitability due to the capture of their market share. <clears throat> and so now let me show you what is the effect of strategic patenting on peers' innovative activity. Uh, so in this case, I will be following months of 2018 and utilize multiple measures for innovation as a dependent variable. Uh, so uh, I will be, so for instance, from in model one, uh, the first measure is R&D expenditures relative to the assets, all assets of the firm, which captures the competitor's innovative input. Then the innovative output is captured by the number of filed patents, which the firm generates and the number of patent granted. And then the type of the innovative search, which the firm engages in is captured by uh, dummy variable, what, whether the patent is filed within the known uh, patent class or whether this patent is of an explorative nature. Uh, so the results are presented in this table. So we can observe that given that one of the main goals of strategic patenting is to basically stifle further innovative activity within this uh, particular uh, product field, we definitely observe this effect. So more specifically, I find that there is a negative effect on the, although not a very strong one of strategic patenting on the number of competitors' patents filed within the following five years. Uh, <clears throat> so this is the model five. At the same time, however, there is no significant effect on the number of patents which are granted to the competitors, which can be possibly explained by the fact that there is an absence of deterioration of the quality of the, of the patents which the competitors are filing, or there's um, independence of the examination procedure for the competitors' patents from the focal firm patents. But at the same time, we observe that there is actually an increase in the firm's um, innovative input. So there is an increase in the R&D expenditures which the firm has over the course of the next five years, uh, which are combined with the observation that there is a drop in the number of explorative patents, uh, which, uh, from which we can conclude that competitors are um, Having, are using more resources, that is R&D expenditures, to uh, try to come back to, to try to file for more patents within the fields which are uh, within the fields which are uh, which they are more familiar with. <clears throat> so that's that's this that's this effect on um, on the innovative search and the uh, innovative input on the competing firms. And now let me move to uh, some of the heterogeneous effects. Uh, so first, I will show that um, if it, given that the main goal of this strategic patenting is to protect the firm's monopolistic profit by preventing competitors from innovating and operating within the same product market, uh, we would expect this effect to be different uh, depending on how close the competitors are in technological and product space <clears throat> uh, to the patenting firm itself. So in this case, I'm following Bloom 2013 and Jaffa uh, 86. 86, and construct the two measure of technological and product proximity. And then I, um, I divide the sample of the patenting firms um, on whether the, uh, divide the sample of the comp competing firms into the two categories, whether they're low or high, depending on whether the proximity score, be it technological or product proximity of the firm that, the, that this particular competitor is below or above the year's uh, median. And then I just replicate the results uh, the baseline results from my from my regressions uh, on the competitors' outcomes uh, on these two separate samples. <clears throat> so first of all, looking at the competitors' uh, total effect productivity effect, one can observe that there is uh, that there is, these effects are stronger with more technologically and product diverse industries. Uh, <clears throat> at the same time. Uh, and then we, uh, the similar results can be observed for the competitors' research and development, um, uh, research and development uh, input. So one possible inter interpretation for this result is that strategic patenting prevents distant competitors in terms of technological and product proximity uh, from entering uh, this particular firm's uh, business operations um, and thus potentially limiting these competitors' uh, options for growth in their own product market. Because all these competitors, which are further away in the technological space, are suffering most. 
So these results are also pretty similar for the type of the patents which the firms are filing, except for um, except for technologically closed firms uh, suffer more in terms of the decline in number of patents which are filed, uh, as well as the decline, which is here in green, as well as the decline in the <clears throat> Uh, number of patents filed within the previously known technological classes. So these results support the main idea behind strategic patenting, that is preventing the follow-on innovation within the same technological class as the patentee. So this was the heterogeneous effects of um, technological and product proximity, and now I'm looking at the role of technological and product, I'm looking at the uh, level of technological advancement of the patenting firm itself. So uh, this analysis will help to answer the question, uh, what type of firms tend to benefit most from strategic patents? And so following Aguillon 2005, I classify firms as either technological leaders or technological laggards based on how close they are to technological frontier firm. And then I, again, divide my sample into those which are leaders and laggards based on whether they are the technological, um, the technological gap uh, is um, above or below the median for this particular here in the sample. Hmm. So here we can observe that the effect of strategic pending on market concentration and the number of firms within the same product market is statistically significant for laggard firms. So this striking result suggests that the laggard firms benefit the most uh, from defensive patenting, implying that these firms may not otherwise be able to compete successfully in the race for novel innovation ideas with their product market competitors if they do not engage in strategic patenting. Um, at the same time, there is no effect of uh, being a leader or a laggard uh, patenting firm on competitors' sales and productivity, but competitors experience heat in sales and productivity when competing with the market leaders uh, and thus forcing them to spend more innovative activity in an attempt to regain their footing, so which is uh, which can be seen in the uh, model eight as a positive effect on competitors' R and D expenditures following a strategic patent by a leader firm. So, um, so these are the results of heterogeneity. Heterogeneity. So now I have, I think, a couple of more minutes to show you some robustness checks. <clears throat> so, um, um, this section. I'll be showing the robustness check for uh, to ensure the validity of previous results. So, uh, first of all, let me show that given that my previous almost of my, most of my previous results are um, heavily relying on the definition of strategic pattern and the uh, being top fifth percentile distribution of economic value and bottom fifth percentile distribution of strategic of technological value. Uh, here, I'm replicating the results. Uh, using different uh, thresholds for defining a patent as a strategic. So as you can see, for this is the results for the effect on uh, market concentration. And the results um, are pretty much consistent uh, across all different uh, specifications of, um, of, of different ways of, classif of classifying patents as strategic, except for the most restricted ones, which was the top 10% economic value, bottom 10% scientific value, or top 10% economic value, bottom 90% scientific value. And then let me go back to show you uh, the results uh, using a different uh, definition of the market industry. <clears throat> uh, so using SIC3 code in instead of uh, instead of using uh, <clears throat> text-based industry classification. So the results uh, remain, uh, results are Similar if I also use the SIC3 code instead of text-based industry classification. As you can see, I'm also using a pseudo competitors by generating a random sample of firms from other industries and assigning them as firms for competitors. And, uh, and as expected, there is no significant effect of having strategic patent grant to the firm on the composition, on the uh, basically competitors from a pseudo industry. So here just all I'm replicating the results from um, effects on total product productivity of competitors using SIC3 codes, um, and then on the competitors' uh, future performance using profit growth, sales growth, and cost of goods sold. So here, and there's no results using the uh, pseudo competitors sample. And let me go back. And I think this is time for me to conclude. So let me move to the conclusion. Hmm. So in this paper, I introduce a new way of classifying patents as strategic and technological, and uh, I show that strategic patents are more likely to fall into the continuation and divisional categories, as well as being filed by previously known, within the previously known technological classes by the firm. At the same time, strategic patents 
do lead to the increase in the market concentration and a long-term profit growth for the firm itself, while having a much lower but positive effect on its productivity. <clears throat> and strategic patent has a negative effect on closest market competitors and is detrimental on innovative activity within the industry, leading to the change in the innovative, uh, innovative search strategy. And so this paper provides a new evidence on the detrimental effect of some type of the specific type of panic activity on innovation and thus potentially on aggregate economic growth. And I think I will stop here. So uh, I will give the floor to the discussion. <laughs>